RPG fans are cheering in joy. February has all their favorite franchises. Hey folks, Mika here and once again I'm bringing you picks by the MN team from video game releases for the next month. Hey, listen! I've never heard of Grand Blue Fantasy prior to Versus Rising, but what I have played was another game called Dragalia Lost by the same developers. You could really get lost in this free-to-play gacha game which for the most part was really enjoyable with a beautiful art style and a fantastic soundtrack. Makes you want to try out, huh? Well, too bad it doesn't exist anymore. But what exists from the same developers is Grand Blue Fantasy vs Rising and that game got me wanting to play more of the characters and dive into the story of the Grand Blue franchise. Side Games really played us with releasing Rising prior to Relink in order to get us hyped for the game. What's really neat about Relink is that you don't need prior knowledge of the series to dive into the game. So for someone like me, this is the perfect opportunity to explore this fantastical world. Some aspects of the gameplay of Freelink are quite similar to the Tales series, which is another positive for me, since I also enjoy the gameplay and combat of Tales of Arise. From the looks of things, players can expect to beat the main game in about 20 to 30 hours, so it doesn't require too much of a time commitment, but there is in-game content and presumably future DLC. The trailers and announcements for Grand Blue Fantasy Freelink have been very promising, but since I'm someone who's new to this series as a whole, I want to dive into this game as blind as possible to explore what it has to offer. Another game, or rather set of games we're looking forward to is the Tomb Raider 1-3 Remastered Collection. The debut games featuring the early year adventures involving one of gaming's most iconic female protagonist characters in one Miss Lara Croft is set to make a return to modern day consoles but we've seen or heard little of what the remastered versions have in store, outside of the usual expected new coat of visual upgrade paint shop, which is certainly an improvement compared to the polygraphics of the past, and should be handy in some highly colorized and complex texture areas such as the Indian jungle levels. Again, with the lack of info from the remastered team so far, there's more to be gleaned from gameplay, but if it's like the originals, then we're looking forward to a good time as Lara runs, guns, and hunts her way through jungles, temples, caves, deserts, all over the world facing human and supernatural threats, as well as the head-scratcher environmental puzzles and hazards that are signature to the franchise. Final Fantasy VII Remake was a game that took the remake part of its name very literally. If you played the first one, you know what I mean, don't you? But let's stay spoiler free for now. The first game took a section of the critically acclaimed JRPG Final Fantasy VII and brought it to life. The graphics were updated, the gameplay was transformed, the characters were voiced, the story was still gripping, and the maps were incredible. And the first game also happened to end on a mystery so tantalizing that it might have split the fanbase in two. You know who's responsible. And now we are finally finally gonna get some answers. Where's the story gonna go next? Who will live? Who will die? How much more of the story will we see? What did it mean by 7 seconds? How literal is the rebirth part of the name? Square, I have questions. This year, on a day that comes once every 4 years, we finally might get some answers. Whenever there's any livestream made by any gaming convention, I'd be like, it's that time of year again? Will Atlas finally announce Persona 6? Only to find out that it didn't happen and get disappointed. Time passed by and then in 2023, in the Xbox showcase, they announced a new Persona game. But it was not Persona 6, but rather the remake of Persona 3. In P3, you play as a high school student who joins the Specialized Extracurricular Execution Squad, or C's a group investigating a temporal anomaly known as a dark hour which takes place at their school, which transforms into a tower, which is pretty much the only thing I know about the game, other than that the Velvet Room is designed as an elevator. Anyways, it's important to know Atlas is remaking the original Persona 3, which means there'll be no epilogue to the original story, which was in Persona 3 FES, and no playable female character, as in Persona 3 Portable. I'm going into this game as blind as possible, to the point where I'm not checking any new trailers, even the new opening theme that was released a couple of weeks ago. My first experience with Persona 5 was its opening theme, which blew me away and made me ready for what's in store. I want a similar experience when I start playing P3 Reload. 
Persona 5 was not only my first introduction to the series, but also my first introduction to turn-based combat and JRPGs. I'm looking forward to seeing how Persona 3 redefined the series back in 2006, and also how the developers implemented what they learned from making Persona 5. Just look at those menu animations, it's so damn smooth and cool! Banisher's Ghost of New Eden was first revealed during the 2022 Game Awards, where they released a somewhat cryptic but tantalizing preview of the game to come. It had high quality visuals, a cinematic soft look, and as a friend of mine was quick to put, was Witcher with a ghost partner. Surely a AAA game in the making. But it wasn't until much later that I found out that this game was being made by Don't Not Entertainment. If you're scratching your head, don't. You likely know and or have played either Life is Strange, Jusant, or even Vampire. The French studio is one with pedigree and a unique if somewhat convoluted flair to their storytelling. Which is odd since there's a part of Banishers which feels very tried and true. Very overdone. You, you have your open world system, your morality system, your crafting systems, all with that look and feel of a modern day Assassin's Creed, which just, well, makes my eyes roll a bit. But then, but then, there's just the concept of the game itself which is intriguing, where the protagonist has the duty of exorcising or banishing the dead. However, the situation gets a bit more complicated as his partner and lover dies early on in the story, and now you're sort of caught between your duty and your desire to presumably resurrect and maintain your now ghost partner. And all of this is set in this frozen land called New Eden with NPCs that are seemingly a lot more fleshed out than usual, and various undead creatures which you battle by switching between the two characters, making for a very, very intriguing setting. There's a chance Banisher's Ghost of New Eden might just be an attempt by a studio trying to emulate AAA games and take a piece of the pie, yet it could be a more in-depth take on a tried and true formula which elevates it to a better position. And that rounds out our picks for February. But wait, if strong RPGs are up your alley for the month, here are some bonus picks to appease your ravenous gaming appetites. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League I know, I know, you expect it, I expect it. We don't think Suicide Squad is going to end up anywhere favorable. Although it is Rocksteady, the studio that we all know and love for the Arkham games, you just can't help but be kinda apprehensive about what seems like an attempt to dress up a well-known name in a looter-shooter live service. I personally am keeping my expectations low, but, but one can always hope that one of their favorite studios manages to defy all odds. No, instead, perhaps we should be looking at Helldivers 2. Revealed to us in perhaps the corniest way a trailer can be made, this game brings back the wave shooter genre in all its glory. Although a part of me wonders if this is going to be another attempt at a live service again to eat into our time. The original Helldivers being such an underrated gem and the developer's tongue-in-cheek presentation has me of two minds. One thing's for sure, fans of the original are more than excited to receive this sequel and jump in with their friends. RZ, the Jewel of Faramore. If you told me that we we're going to get a game which takes the aesthetics and the presentation of a Philips CDI game in 2024 of all things, I'd have a slap you and ask you whether you're okay. But lo and behold, RZ, the Jewel of Faramore aims to do exactly that. With voice actors from the older CDI games returning, the animation and gameplay on point, you gotta give props to the devs for their risk taking here. And here's hoping for more nostalgia and less want of Gamelon more flashbacks. Pacific Drive Take the roguelike genre, the action survival genre, mix in the paranormal and then a generous helping of car. Yes, a car. Into the game's mix and you get Pacific Drive. Your task in this game is to get through a mysterious forest zone where all the laws of the known universe are going topsy-turvy and find out why it's happening. And you accomplish this by, well, driving through the area with your car, which you craft and modify and arm to defend yourself against the unknown. It's all very vague and mysterious. Which, speaking of, brings us to Nightingale. 
an open world survival game set in a Victorian steampunk setting which tasks you with venturing forth from humanity's final bastion through various portals to help us survive. Apart from the unique time setting, you also have a somewhat limited control over where these portals will lead you with the use of cards to sort of create the settings for your destination. With a fascinating setting, a touch of Mary Poppins, and a beautiful world to venture in with 4 player co-op, this might be one survival game I'm more than happy to pick up with friends. But hey, are you looking forward to any of the RPGs? Maybe even Suicide Squad? If these aren't your picks, then let us know in the comments below. What will you choose in February? I'm Mika, and here's me signing off.